Well, hey everybody, my name is Mike Shaw, and I'll be explaining how to use Planet for photographers, as you can see here, to plan for the upcoming lunar eclipse in about a week from when I'm making this video on January 31st, 2018. So I'm just going to jump straight into it. There's so many features that Planet for Photographers has, uh, it's, it's impossible to describe them all here. I'll just go through a few of the key ones that you'll be able to use for planning the eclipse. So when I open up the, uh, the app, um, this is the basic planning screen that you see, and it's based in my hometown of St. Paul, Minnesota. You can zoom in and out using uh, you know, the scroll bar on the side, and uh, that'll be useful as you'll see here in a bit. But what I want to do is I'm going to use this magnifying glass here in the upper right hand corner, and I'm going to search for a particular landmark that I'm familiar with called Temple of the Sun. So Temple of the Sun, and that is in Utah. And the reason I'm showing you this, whoops, I misspelled that, is uh, this has a built-in uh, database through, I think, Google Maps that allows you to search for lots of different places with all sorts of useful information built in. So there it is, Temple of the Sun. So I'm going to tap on it with my finger. And whoop, there we are. We just flew out west to Utah. And here is this amazing mountain called Temple of the Sun. You might want to Google it and check out some of the features that um, are associated with it because it's pretty neat. There's another one over here. They're just called Temple of the Moon down there. Anyway, what we want to do is we want to position, we want to, what the goal here is to create a composite uh, shot image of the eclipse right next to this particular mountain. So we want to have the moon, the eclipsed moon, every you know few minutes, maybe five minutes, as it sets in the, uh, in the west, roughly, as the rising sun comes up in the east, and we can see the shadow of the earth. Uh, projected onto the moon, which constitutes a lunar eclipse. So here's how we're going to use it to set this up. So the first thing we want to do is we want to tell Planet that Temple of the Sun is our scene of interest. And what you can see here is a red icon. Uh, you can see a little uh, brown camera mark that's built into uh, the system, and then this little blue mark, which I've done in the I've set this up in the past as being a, a landmark of interest to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this little plus. Uh, sign down here in the lower right. Again, I'm just showing you how to use this. There's so many ways to, to go through this. It's almost mind-boggling. I love this app. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to use it to, to illustrate how to use it. So I'm going to click on the plus sign, uh, or tap on it, I should say. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the scene location. And that's that little red pin. What I want to do is I'm going to zoom in here. I want to press on that little red pin. I want to bring it over to that landmark. So I see how it snapped into place. And that's just great. Um, what I also want to do is to then zoom out. I want to tell Planet where I want to have my camera. And you can see there's a, several dirt roads here. And I'm going to say, let's, let's imagine we want to, uh, I don't know if you can see the circle. I'm going to put it in the shadow under the word sun. See that little white circle? That's the center of the screen. And wherever I, whatever I put underneath that circle becomes the place of interest. I want to put this, let's say at this road junction right there. I'm going to tap on the plus sign again. So here we go, plus. And now I'm going to see where it says set the camera location. I'm going to put the camera location just there. So I put the camera location here. I've got the scene location at the Temple of the Sun. Fantastic. Now, next thing I want to do is I want to actually highlight my um, marker and for the Temple of the Sun. And what I've done in the, before this, uh, previous to this, is I've actually um, put my that little red icon as a marker. And if I tap on the plus sign, you can see where it says add a marker. And I, I've done that. So I'm going to go to the marker and I'm going to edit it using this little editing pen. And the key thing here is what I want to do is if you look at the top here, you can see where it says latitude and longitude, but then elevation says tap to update. So I'm going to tap on that. And bam, what it does, and this is the, this right here, this is what sets Planet for Photographers apart. Planet for Photographers access this geodesic database and determines this elevation directly from that. Uh, I, I know some of the other apps do this, but you'll see where I'm going with this. But then look down here, it says show ground contour in viewfinder, as well as show the icon in the viewfinder. So we want to keep that in place. So now I'm going to uh, tap on the check mark to save that. So now we've loaded up the, uh, the, um, the ground profile, excuse me. And what I want to do now is if I go to this little plus sign down here in the right hand corner, you can see I have uh, a variety of options available to me. 
but the, if I tap on the, um, I tapped on this middle one here, the one with the green rectangle, and what that does is that brings up, look over here, uh, details about the, the, the actual, uh, the, the focal length lens that I'm using in the field of view. So what I'm gonna do is, you see this green fan, that's the direction that the camera is pointing in its field of view. So what I wanna do is I wanna turn, I'm just pressing with my finger, and see how the azimuth is changing while I'm doing this. I wanna turn that around so now I'm aiming at the temple of the sun. And you can see if I tap on the focal length, I can say, I suppose I wanna have a 14 millimeter lens, so it's a much wider uh, fan. If I go down here to like a 50 millimeter, it's a much narrower fan and so forth. So that's that's what the deal with is with that. Um, and now if I go over here to the viewfinder icon and I click on the virtual viewfinder, what you'll see is this view here and bam, right there, that's what the mountain looks like. It's giving you a simulated view of the mountain from where you are, which is phenomenal because if you haven't ever been to the place, you want to know what it looks like. Right away you can see from where I'm standing, a 50 millimeter lens is too, uh, is too long. I need to have a wider field of view. So what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to uh, double tap and pinch with my fingers. I'm going to pinch that down like so and uh, see what that looks like. So what I've done now is I've changed the focal length to 11.3 millimeters. So if I have an 11.3 millimeter lens, it takes a minute for this thing to load. Um, we're going to see what this looks like here in just a sec. So you can see the outline coming in right there and then the uh, there, oh, there it goes. There's the rest of the gradient. So if I had an 11.3 millimeter lens, it would look something like that. Okay, so what we want to do now is position the uh, eclipsed moon next to this mountain. And of course, I think this is going to be too, uh, too closer, but we'll play with that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back. I'm going to tap on this left pointing arrow with my finger. And what I want to do now is to bring in the eclipse planning tools. So look up here at the top. It's got, if you see that little downward pointing uh, white V-shaped thing, that's a little carrot. Oops, I missed it. Uh, if I click on that, um, I get the uh, the tools of Planet for Photographers. And here where things get really great. So we have the top row, sun and moon tools, the night photography tools, the special interests, and then the coastscape tools. We're interested in the special interest tools, so in particular the eclipse tools. So I'm going to tap on this eclipse icon, and that brings up this uh, the same screen we just had, actually. But look, on the top row, you can see up here there's all this information about the upcoming lunar eclipse on the 31st of January 2018. And of course, you can toggle between lunar and solar eclipses. But for now, this is the one we're interested in. And what we want for our sequence is we want to go from the beginning of the partial eclipse to the end of the partial eclipse. We don't care about the penumbral eclipses because they're too dim to really uh, you know, be of interest and stuff. So the partial begins, as you can see here, at 4.48 a.m. And the partials end at 8.11 a.m with the maximum uh, totality of 6.30 a.m. All kinds of stuff we can do with this, but for now I just wanna show you how to use it here. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna long press on the, whoops, I tapped on the wrong thing there, sorry. What I wanna do, now I'm going back to the eclipse. I wanna long press on the 448, and what that did is it turned green, do you see that? Oops, sorry, I pressed on the wrong thing again. So it turned green, and then look at the bottom, we've just changed our date and time to that, to 448 on January the 31st in the morning. And now that we've said, okay, this is the time when the eclipse, the part, our, our eclipse sequence begins. So now what I want to do is to go back to the ephemeris uh, um, tool set, and I want to pick on my sequence tool, which is right here. So I'm going to tap on that. And over here on the left, you see these up and down blue carrots. I want to press on those, long press. And what I did there is I, let's try that again. It says, use the current time as the starting time for my sequence. So now that I've done that, it said, okay, I'm gonna start my sequence at 4.48 a.m. on the morning of the eclipse, which is what I wanna do. So I'm gonna go back to the eclipse page. I'm gonna uh, press on um, the tap on the eclipse, and I'm gonna to go to the where it says partials end. So I'm gonna long press on that. And now that sets the current time to then. So it's now 8.11 uh, on the eclipse morning. I want to go back to my sequence page. I'm going to press on that down button again, go to the sequence tool, and over here on the right, you can see the up and down uh, blue carrots. I'm going to long press on those and say use the current time as the ending time. So what did I just do? What I did is I found the eclipse date and time, or date that I'm interested, the uh, lunar eclipse on, um, actually I'm noticing it says sun sequence. I'm going to click over here to say moon sequence. 
So now we have a moon sequence from 4.48 a.m. to 8.11 a.m. So what we did here, just to synopsize, is to say, hey, look, planet, um, I want to make a, a, a moon sequence that starts at the beginning of the partial phase and ends at the end of the partial phases. By the way, the beginning of the partial phases starts at 4.48 in the morning and the end at 8.11 in the morning. Okay, so that's what we just did. Now here's where things get really cool, is we go back to our virtual viewfinder, which is this little icon down here. So I press on that, press on the virtual viewfinder, and now, bada boom, I have the outline of the mountain, but I've also got the projected view of the eclipse. This is where the beginning and the end of the eclipse is. You can see how it's superimposed on the virtual horizon. And this, this is just a phenomenal tool. And this is what I wanted to show you with this video, is you can now change the camera position, you can change the focal length of the lens, and you can really dial in exactly when you want what phase of the eclipse to intersect the landmark. And if this doesn't work for you, then you say, okay, I'm not gonna go to the Temple of the Sun, I'm gonna go to Seattle, Washington, or I'm gonna go to Maui, or you know some other place that uh, you might wanna go to shoot the eclipse if your time and budget permits. So let me show you one more thing while we're on this page. You see this little icon down here, which is a play button. So I'm gonna hit play. And if you look carefully, you can see how you see the moon coming along. And then if we look down here on the bottom, you can see the timeline advancing. So what's happening is as dawn approaches, you can see how the twilight uh, lightens up the sky. You can see that right about here, I'm gonna hit pause. Right here, if I zoom in, you can see that the moon I'm, I'm zooming and scrolling, which is why it's jumping all over the place. You can see the moon is just about to hit the horizon here at 718 in the morning. How do we use that information? Well, how bright is the sky? And what phase of the eclipse exactly are we in? So let's go back to the um, eclipse phase and the twilight phase. Now, while we're doing this, avoid jumping back and forth between the ephemeris page. You can also see this row of uh, colored squares. So we have orange squares, purple squares, green squares, and blue squares. Each of these squares is corresponds to a tool. So in fact, if I look at this, so the green, the solid green tool right now is, is this thing, the sequence. The one right next to it, I'm gonna tap on it now. There we go, that's the eclipse uh, one. So that just brought us to the same page I did before without having to go through the whole ephemeris page. So what that's saying, so remember right now, it's hitting the horizon at 718, whoops, 718 a.m. And if we look over here, we can see that that is at the end, that's after the end of the of totality. So we've started to go back into the partial phases. In the west coast of the U.S. for this eclipse, that's about as good as we're going to get. So that's helpful to know. Now, though, let's look at the twilight stage. And if I'm going to go over here to the second, look over here, look right where I'm I'm indicating. I'm going to tap right there, and what this is telling us is that the 7:18 a.m is getting is two thirds of the way through civil twilight. So the sky is pretty bright and we might not even be able to see the moon at that point. Uh, if it's just um, leaving, uh, if, it's just, if it's just leaving totality, and we might just be able to make out a thin sliver of the partial phase. So again, that, that's a pretty cool, that's a pretty cool shot by itself. Okay, just to wrap it up, I just want to go back to the eclipse, uh, or the, the sequence page, which is that second from the left green square. So I'm going to click on that now right there. And I'm going to say, okay, that's a pretty cool shot. But actually, I think I want to move the sequence a little bit more to the right. So to do that, I'm going to tap on this little leftward pointing arrow right just there. And I'm going to move my camera. So I'm going to move my camera and a long press on it, and move it up the road, let's say to right about there. So what I did is I moved the camera from right just here to right just there right up the road. Let's see how that affects our composition. So I'm going to go back to our virtual viewfinder, uh, wait for a minute for the, everything to load. And what you can see here is, is this is the real value of this tool is, you know, the alternative to this is a little bit on the blind side to just go in and, you know, kind of you think you know where the thing is, the moon's going to be and you can, you know, it's going to be, in a, uh, a, you can see the moon, of course, it'll be a full moon, so it'll be <laughs> plainly visible. But um, you know, you're kind of hoping that it's going to intersect the, the mountain at the right place at the right time. We're, right now, we're just waiting for the, uh, the contour to load. Um, so we'll give it a minute to do that. Okay, there we go. Okay, and you can see that the uh, eclipse has moved a little bit to the right. And uh, we might like to do that just one more time just to see what happens. We're going to tap in the uh, left arrow again. And I suppose we want to move a little bit further up the road, something like this, just hypothetically. And let's just see what that does to our 
uh, to our view of the mountain. And what you can see here is, as you might expect, it's going to, um, we, we've moved the, uh, the line of the eclipse into the mountain. But the thing to be careful of here, I'm going to zoom in so you can really see what's going on here, is when we zoom in to, to see, when we zoom in to see the actual, uh, the, the point of intersection between the trajectory of the moon and the edge of the mountain, we want to find out what time, what exactly what time that takes place. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to long press on the time. And I'm going to go back. See the moon there coming back up. And then I'm going backwards in time, so the sky's getting darker. So right about there. So that's 6.29 a.m. So I'm going to tap on the orange uh, box just there. That'll take us back to our twilight times. So at 6.29, that is the very beginning of nautical twilight. So that's a pretty nice time to catch the, and let's see what phase of the moon is. I'm going to go back to my eclipse page. See how handy this all is? So this is at 6.29. At 6.29, oh, this, that's the maximum eclipse. So the maximum eclipse is happening at the beginning of nautical twilight. And I'm going to zoom back out now with the, um, and that neat, you can, this, this particular page shows the uh, constellations too. So you can see Leo up there. Um, so at this particular point, that's the maximum eclipse, and it'll be right just there next to the mountain. So anyway, that's how you can use, uh, so that's the shot you'd get, and you, that would be with, let's remind ourselves what the, um, let's go back, this with that shot, what is our, uh, let's go back to our, uh, whoops, Let's go. That's uh, probably the easiest way just to show you this is to go back to the main page. So this is with a 20 millimeter lens. And what we might want to do now is say, okay, look, I'm, I know that I want to use a 14 millimeter lens. Or let's say an 18 millimeter lens. Let's go with 18 millimeters, see what that looks like. So then we have our 18. So that's our shot right just there. Whoops. Except some, oh, that's the sun right over there. Because um, I've got the sun thing checked. Okay, let's go back to there. So, okay, we have an 18 millimeter lens. You can see it right there. It says an azimuth of 285 degrees. So we can set our, uh, the center of our field of view with that using a compass when we're out there. We don't have to have the internet in case this doesn't show up. And that's the shot we're going to get. And we know that we need to go to, okay, now we can really zoom in on the camera location. I'm going to turn off the green fan. So I'm just zooming into my fingers here. So you can literally say, okay, I'm going to find that particular bush <laughs> in the road, and that's where I'm going to park off to the side of that. You can see these are all just dirt roads in the middle of nowhere, so uh, I don't think there would be any real issue with that. And that's how you sign, let's line up your shot. So I hope that helped. Um, uh, again, this is Mike Shaw, your Nightscape professor, urging you to get out, look up, and shoot your night skies. Until next time, take care.